and tonight it's your boy we are 75 here for some more fun and games and specifically we're continuing with cemetery mary honestly i really love your so this game and it's just been a wonderful thrill and i can't wait to play more so let's just dive right in it was huge what was it was a weird feeling walking in here by myself this is where Especially considering I don't really come to these places. It's the hardware store, right? Reginald, my, um, you know, my killer, because I already call this Reginald, invited me to the hardware store uh, to find me at the cemetery. <laughs> I don't know what I was really expecting, but it was so empty. I didn't even see any workers around. Despite that, I kept hearing footsteps. Reginald? I called up. No response. Mm. What am I doing? This place isn't scary. I'm just gonna get the things he asked me for. What was that on that list? Wait, hey, where did this go? Did I drop it somewhere? Oh, shoot. Uh, that's okay. I'm pretty sure I remember what was on it. I'll just get those things and find my way back to the front. I just have to get... Ah uh, <laughs> Pick all that apply. Oh great. I love this. Thank you for that. An axe. Picked up an axe. Is this the right kind? I mean, he's using it for wood, right? So this should be good. Like, what else would you use an axe for? It's heavy. Rat poison. Picked up a bottle of rat poison. <laughs> no comments? Jesus. I don't remember exactly what was on the list. Antifreeze. Picked up a gallon of antifreeze. Should I get the blue one? Or wait, maybe he wants the green one. Maybe I'll ask him later. And... What was the last thing? I'm gonna see a hammer. Picked up a hammer. One of the classic looking ones with a circular face and a split inside. Surely he needs one of these, right? Picked up what I thought he'd need and decided to head back towards the counter. After all, if I took too long, I would lose the race. At least I need my way back. At the very least, I got back to the meeting spot before version of the I only had to wait for about a minute before he showed up. I love this. Like, if you look at this art, it looks like she's just got a watering gun on her head. I love that. Ah, so you made it back before me. Well done. Well, do you have everything? Ah, uh, looks like you got a little confused. Unacceptable! Uh, oops. Yeah, that's, um, my bad. Let's see, Reginald. What would you like? Auntie Freeze and Ox. Tape measure. Not a hammer, tape measure. God damn it. Put it all about. Antifreeze. Uh, the ox. Rat poison. A tape measure. So a measuring tape. I grabbed a roll of measuring tape. I always used to play with these as a kid. Let me try to see how long I can stretch it. Yep, that should be it. Please. Did I miss up anything? Well, do you have everything? Yes, here you are! Ah, wait, was that Mary's line? Oh, it was. Cool. Ah, you did get it all. And just the brands I like, too. You haven't been spying on me, have you? <laughs> Cute. Nice. Nice joke, Reginald. That's making sure Reginald had everything he needed. He and I headed up towards the front counter to pay for it all. One by one, he put all the stuff into the conveyor belt. That's not how you spell conveyor belt. 
and it slowly began to move across as Akashi began to scan it. We got quite a bit of stuff, Reginald. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's a mallet. Uh, that's rude. I'm sorry. It took me a moment to recognize this face. Look at that face, it's so cute. And it's also the face of someone who's real suspicious or curious. She's just like, You got a lot of stuff here, buddy. What are you gonna do with it? And he's just sweating bullets. You can't even see his mouth, he's so s tense. <laughs> I feel bad. Oh, why is that? Well, you don't have a car with you, and now you gotta carry these bags back home. Would you want me to help you? Oh, don't worry your silly little head about that. A little fresh air and exercise does me some good. You're not even going to take the bus? No, I'm quite worried. You're weird. Reginald, can I uh, ask you something? Yes, of course. Is everything alright? <laughs> I know the seaborne rat poison. Yes, it's unfortunate, but my apartment has been having a bit of a rodent problem lately. And of course, the landlord won't take care of it, so somebody has to do something. Does that upset you? Well, I don't know. I wish you'd use a more humane way to get rid of them. Right, I see. In that case, I won't buy it anymore. Well, after this time, I suppose. Really? Thanks, that makes me feel better. Hey, do you want anything? Huh? They've got a shelf over there with some candy. I don't mind buying you a chocolate bar if you want one. Oh no, that's alright, you don't have to. Are you sure? I mean, is that supposed to be my prize for winning the race? No, no. I'm still thinking about what your prize should be. But since we're here anyways, might as well, right? Consider it a thank you for spending time with me today. Are you really sure? Of course I am. It's just a candy bar, it's not a big deal. I can buy you a candy bar without going broke. <laughs> In that case, thank you. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate bar acquired. Original bought me a chocolate bar, yay! It made me very happy. I made sure to thank him for it, even though he insisted it was his thanks to me. <laughs> After we left the store, Reginald had to head home, saying he ought to drop off his tools and stuff. He said he felt bad not being able to invite me to do more. I told him it was completely okay, he didn't need to do anything. Ugh, fine, I, I can already hear all of you screaming, ask about the ox, ask about the ox, fine. Yes, I did. My job requires me to have a lot of wood. Ah, uh, I know what you're worried about, though. You do? You're worried I'm going to hurt myself, aren't you? There's nothing to worry about. I've done this kind of stuff before. I just happened to break the old one last time. Alright. Uh, what a logical sound argument he had. I completely don't, bother, don't believe it. I told him it was completely okay, he didn't need to do anything. I had a nice time today. Time was really fly. Because when I checked the time afterwards, we were, we were already well into the afternoon. I ended up heading home a little early that day. Didn't have much else to do outside, so I went home. I read some books, I made myself dinner, and then put the leftovers in the fridge. Then I washed up, put on pajamas, and well, do I even have to explain what I did after that? Hi again. Hello. So, what did you do today? What? Well, if you're not going to talk about my appearance to me, I'd at least want to hear about something that you're doing. We shouldn't talk about what I do. Why not? Because you don't need to know. Doesn't it concern me? As far as I know, everything you do concerns me. Right. I'm sorry. I need to leave. Good night, Mary. Bitch. I yawn and lay down. Huh? What? Who's texting me so late at night? Mary! 
Are you weak? I understand if you aren't, of course. It's a bit late, isn't it? But whenever you read this, do respond. Original, what the fuck do you want? Stop slugging me, bitch. Hey, you up so late. Oh, hello. Don't worry about that. I just thought of the perfect price for you. And I had to tell you as soon as I possibly could. Really? What is it? I can't believe I never mentioned it to you before. And after you helped me with my errands earlier too. You must have been so confused. I make coffins, you see. <laughs> Reginald, my boy, you make coffins for a living. Well then. Whoa, really? Like, really, really? That's awesome! I'm glad you think so. Here, I'll send you some pictures of my work. And I was thinking if you like them, well... I was thinking you could come to my workshop. And I could show you how a coffin is made. At least, the way I do it. <laughs> I thought it'd be a nice idea if you're into it. I'll make a coffin just for you. You're serious? I'm allowed to come see? Of course you are! I wouldn't have invited you otherwise. I mean, legitimately speaking, making coffins isn't exactly private. It's when you hear um, putting a body in a coffin. That's uh, that's private. That's uh, that's very very private. Then yeah, I'd love to see. I think that'd be really cool. Thank you so much. Of course, I'm often alone, so it'll be nice to have some company. This man is going to tell me he has mannequins in his house, or in his workshop, whatever, so he can check the sizes of the bodies. You know, so he builds a coffin for the right size, for the right kind of person, you know, just god damn it, why? Here, I'll send you the directions momentarily. Reginald gave me the directions to his workshop. And we made plans to meet there in a few days. I always wondered what went into making a coffin, so I was plenty excited to be able to see it for myself. There's only so much you can read online about stuff like this. Well, there's wood, and hot dolls, and plush lining in the inside. I mean, yeah, what, what, there, there isn't much to make in a coffin. Not to disrespect anyone who makes a coffin. Because, you know, style is all of the rage. Because again, I'm thinking of a simple rectangular ones. And then I'm sure, <laughs> I am entirely sure that What's-His-Face is going to be making the vampire-esque ones. You know the ones. Flat base, angular at the edges, meets in the sides, kind of angles up, flat top, you know. About the shape of a cross, I'll, I'll call it out if I see it. There's only so much you can read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to experience it first hand would be something entirely different. Honestly, it was a bit hard to contain how giddy I was. I felt like a kid again, excited for a field trip the next day. Well, back when I still went to school with other kids and all. Anyways, I was excited, and after feeling like I'd been waiting forever, the day finally arrived. Getting off the bus at the closest stop, I walked to the location where Reginald told me I, took. I should go. He told me it was a bit of a ways off the sidewalk and not too close to many buildings. Again, look at how cute this girl is. Adorable. I had honestly felt like I walked into a whole new city. I, not that's not the city. That's like countryside. That is a nice lush field of grass, and that's a tree, and that's basically whoever's house. But you barely see houses because they're all like five miles from each other. <laughs> I definitely wasn't. Sorry, it definitely wasn't brick as well. I can't English. I'm too giddy. <laughs> I just want to catch Reginald in the act of murdering me, you know? It definitely will. I'm tired. I am 100% tired. 
Hopefully that was a cause my nerves. Cute. It definitely wasn't as brick and mortar as back where I'm used to being. There were so many trees and buildings were so spread. The grass grew in such a way that it didn't feel overgrown, despite reaching a bit above your ankles. I walked down the town's cracked sidewalk until I came across the puddle path. And following it down, I caught sight of Reginald's workshop. It was so old fashioned. It was big, but completely made of wood. It almost looked like it had its own little cottage. It almost looked like its own little cottage, way out here. But it was charming and I liked it. I mean, yeah, cottage core is a shit. I have a good few friends who would scream cottage core shits on me. I went up to the door and gave it a few gentle knocks. I didn't want to hear it. They don't want to hear anything. I'm sorry, I'm too deep in the horror lore. <laughs> I'm just expecting it. <coughs> I didn't hear anything at first, but then... Reginald opened the door. <laughs> Look at this lad. He hasn't slept in days and boy his eyeballs are showing. Fucking love it though. Is that a fucking man bun in the back there? Gorgeous, and look at these. Look at those. <laughs> this boy is grumpy. At first, he had a not so happy expression on his face. It was only for a split second, but I noticed it before it changed. <gasps> Mary! <laughs> I love this shit. He goes to someone's workplace and they're just so fucking grumpy. And then they realize it's you and they just light up with joy. Oh, it's the best. Ah, oh, Mary, you're here! Come in, come in! So glad you can make it! Oh, look at the lean! Look at this lad! I sound so gay and I know it's nice. I'm sorry, but I am not... I regret nothing. <laughs> look at this luscious lad! He's a fucking killer! I knew it. This. See this? This. The vampires have coffins. With the angles, flat top, flat base. Yep, that's exactly what I thought it would be. I took a step into the workshop. It was so cozy in here. There was such gentle sunlight flowing in through the windows, and the smell of sawdust was prominent in the air. But it was a good kind of sawdust smell. It smelled like productivity and hard work. I actually just started my break, but you're free to look around and ask about things in the meantime. In the meantime. I don't think that was agreed with me. Are you sure? I don't want to bother you on your break. Oh, <laughs> nonsense. I can't think of a better way to spend my free time. So, anything you're curious about? Everything. <coughs> Tell me about everything. It's a lot more woodsy than I expected. These are your work clothes? Are those new tools looking for you? Are you always alone here? Is that your work in the back? Woodsy, oh you think so? <laughs> yes, I do prefer to keep things a little more natural out here. Rustic, some could say. It takes a bit longer, but it's more than worth it in the end. Better for the environment as well. Do you do work clothes? Oh yes. Do you like them? Oh <laughs> yeah? They look very nice, the couple suspenders. Suspenders! <laughs> but, uh, your hair is a little bit loose, don't you think? <laughs> yes, yes, you're not the first to say that. But it's hard to control it at all. But it's hard to control it at all, and I can't be it to cut it. Felt. No worries, though. I assure you, I haven't had an accident since. I haven't had an accident since. And if I do, then you can just tell me you told me so. Um, that's a bit odd. Disney tools looking for you? Extravagantly so. That is an interesting way to say yes. I think that's because I had you helping me that day. What? It's your regular browns, you idiot. Are you secretly a good luck charm? <laughs> if only you knew. 
I think I feel more like the opposite if I'm honest, so great. <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> oh come now, don't say that. <laughs> you haven't let me down yet. Yeah, that's um that's the thing, right? There's always a yet. Are you always alone here? Oh not always. Okay, just about always. But it's alright. I, I don't mind it. I, I get to meet up with some others when they need bases and all. So I'm not always, always alone. So don't worry about it. Besides, are any of us re ever really alone? He winked at me after seeing it. Reginald, stop stalking me, please. It's actually work in the back. Indeed it is. It's just a beast right now though. Nothing too special about it yet. I think it looks pretty good though. Especially just since it's not like I know how to do any of this stuff. Well if you'd like. You could take a step inside. You could be my little tester. <laughs> well really? Honey. He's asking you to slip into the coffin. Don't blush that hard. I'm excited too, but don't blush that hard. <laughs> sure, I mean, haven't you always wanted to know what it was like to actually, to actually lie in one? I know I have. Y yeah! I'd like to try it, if it's okay. Of course it is. I wouldn't have offered otherwise. Stick your shoes off first. I stepped into the coffin. Even though I was still standing upwards, I crossed my arms as if I had been lying down in them. Reginald gave me a teensy wave as he lifted the lid and placed it over the coffin, encompassing me in the darkness inside. What did I say? He put me in the coffin. How's it feel in there? It's cozy. That's great. It'll be your home for the rest of your life. I think? I'm sure it'll be a lot cozier once it's finished. Maybe we'll add some nice cushions and a shiny finish to really put it over the top. Call it. <laughs> yeah. I always did wonder what it, was fe what it feels like in those. Guess you'll have to let me try it again when it's finished. Hello? Reginald? You're still there, right? Hello? That's two tops. If I hear one, two, three, four. If I hear four tops, he's locked me in the coffin. Uh, guess I'll just let myself out then. <laughs> huh? I have pushed on the lid in front of me, but it didn't budge at all. I pushed harder, but it didn't reveal. Tree. Reginald? Can you hear me? I like to get out now. <laughs> hey! How much air is in here anyways? I tried pushing again. That's full by the way. No use. And no matter how much I yelled out to him, it seemed as if Reginald had just vanished. Hey! Let me out, please! I punched the lid in an attempt to get out. I felt pee and sewage shimmer my wrist as I did so. But still, I did it again. And again. And again. Help me! Please! Let me out! Let me out! Please! I can't get out! Please! Did I die in the coffin? Rationality, you fucking dipshit! <sighs> Reginald, you had one job, and you were 90% of the way to finishing it. Why did you let me out of the coffin, you fucking idiot? Finally, I was let out. I struggled to catch my breath as I was met with the face of Reginald, who looked quite shocked to see me in such a state. Mary? What happened? Are you alright? Did... Where were you? Didn't you hear me screaming in there? No, oh, why? Someone had knocked on the door. I figured you'd be able to get out on your own, so I... 
You look shaken. Just a little bit. I just got so nervous when I couldn't get out. I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm the sorry one. Really, I'm. I'm so sorry. Today was supposed to be nice, but I... I shouldn't have left you alone. I'm sorry. I, uh, I'll make it up to you, okay? You you really don't have to. It's alright. I feel bad. It wasn't your fault. It is my fault! Besides, I won't feel good about it unless I do something to make it, to make it up to you, okay? It's just how I am. Reginald, your idea of making this up to me better be taking me on a date. Reginald, I want you to put the finishing touches on this coffin. Put it in a grave. Let me lie in it. And then fucking bury me alive. I stayed for less than an hour after that. It became pretty awkward after my little panic. Original still looked like he felt really bad. I told him I'd let him walk in peace. He told me it was okay if I wanted to leave. But he'd like to see me again soon. We said our goodbyes and I left, not wanting to not wanting him to feel any worse over it. I didn't do much the rest of the day. I had, well, planned around this. But now I didn't feel up for doing much at all. I went back home and decided to just relax. I was sure that once I was fully calm, what happened today wouldn't have seemed that bad at all. So I spent the rest of my evening at home. Until it was time for bed once again. I've got something to ask you again. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I wanna ask you something. You just did. What? No. Something different. Go ahead. Are you trapped? Are you trapped? What a question. Yeah, are you trapped? What do you mean by that? What you're doing right now? Is it because you want to? Or do you not have a choice? There's always a choice. Even if that choice is to do nothing. But the choice I've made was with the best intentions in mind. Good night, Mary. You know, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> I can never, never get about that. I went to bed after that. I don't know if it be. I don't know if it's becoming easier to sleep at night. What? what, what, what? I don't know if it becoming easier to sleep at night was a good thing or a bad thing. It was really hard to read that and I don't know why. That's a weird way to phrase the sentence. Like, I get what you're going for. I guess it's not a weird way, I just... My brain is in such a scrambled state because I want to die. I don't know if it becoming easier to sleep at night was a good thing or a bad thing. Regardless, I slept. I don't know if being able to fall asleep easier is a good or bad thing. That's a more conducive way to say that line to get the same meaning. Yeah, that. That's how I would have written that. I don't know if being able to fall asleep is here. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just weird. The days following were mostly uneventful, but I think that's probably a good thing. I didn't need something to shake things up even more. The first two days in the past, I did my usual hobbies. I went to the cemetery, I placed flowers, I planted flowers. I didn't really talk to anyone. That was fine too. On the third day, it was raining, so I decided I would stay home. I decided to finally take out the manga I got from the library. I hadn't started it yet, but today seemed like a perfect day to. Crowven, come bother me, I'm bored. I let the fireplace as I cuddle up with a blanket next to it, expecting to spend 
quite a while sitting there. It was a thick book, but I was sure I could finish it all in the sitting. As for its content, well, it wasn't the best manga I had ever read. But it was still really interesting and it captivated me nonetheless. The story is mostly light-hearted and at some points even felt like a comedy. But I had just gotten to a part that was a bit more serious. Making me all the more invested. Oh god. Oh, the shoujo manga. Oh god. The main boy was hopelessly in love with the main girl. That was obvious enough from the start. Despite this, he didn't want to be her boyfriend. In fact, he really didn't want to be in a relationship with her at all. The manga had been pretty comedic up until this point. It was mostly about the boy taking wild steps to keep the girl his friend, while also not wanting it to evolve into more. So the entire plot of Komi-san? Or, you know, half of the fucking shoujo mangas in the world that have a main... I don't want to say a main female character. But basically a main male protagonist. You know, like I, I can't begin to think of one right now except for like horror Mia. But that doesn't count. Or even insinuate he had feelings for the... My man went to Nistakoi, but Nistakoi was about confessing, which is a much different issue. And now I'm thinking of Toradoro. I need to stop. He never explains why he doesn't want to date her, just like he doesn't. But now it appears that the girl had grown feelings for him in return, making things all the more complicated. My love. <laughs> oh my goodness. My friend, I love you. And I know you love me too, so why do you not want to date me? Do you not want to be with someone like me? Am I not good enough for you? <laughs> no, my darling, that's not it at all. I do love you. It's just complicated. <laughs> or something like that. God Lord knows. Love is War. That's a good one. Anime, manga, everything. Go read and watch it. Love is War. Have fun. And it looks like the boy was ready to confess why he felt the way he did. I was completely in this as I turned the page, only to be met with. Hey! Oh, how terrible. Someone had vandalized the pages with some sort of black paint or nail polish, it seemed. I turned to the next page just to make sure the rest of the book was alright. Sure enough, the other pages were also scribbled in black. Except for one. There was a drawing on it, and what looked like some kind of writing underneath. It made me feel disappointed. I know it's not all that uncommon for edgy teenagers to write in books and all, but still, this belongs to the library. I mean, the worst I've seen in terms of library vandalism in an actual book is like people writing in the columns, but usually it's either funny jokes that are relevant to the plot or they actually color in some of the images like I've borrowed a good few mangas that were just semi-colored in like usually in only one or two colors at most and it's just like they go through it looking for where this color would fit and they just color it in and it's cute it's real nice so I haven't dealt with like this level of fuck up you shouldn't damage it I tried to look on the bright side and think that maybe it was a donation to the library instead. That someone had drawn it in the book when they owned it and donated it without realizing. So though, did no one check to see if the book was in good enough shape to be donated? Well, there was nothing I could do about it, no. I made a mental note to tell the library of the damaged book when I went next. I flipped back to the beginning pages to make sure I didn't miss any of the marks. But when I did... <laughs> huh? The page I was just on looked nothing like it had before. Oh god. 
Mary, did you fall asleep while reading a manga? Or is this book just fucking pissed? All the characters, it was like they were looking straight at me. Smiling at me. I turned the page and it was the same. All eyes were on me. Completely startled, I threw the book away from me. But I didn't see where I was throwing. In my panic, I had thrown the book right into the fire. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I wanted to save it, but it was too late. Putting the fire out wouldn't have saved it. It was already pitch black and burning into ash. I smacked myself in the head. I was always so careful with library books and now I just let one get completely destroyed. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Ugh. Even though the book was beyond rescue, I still had to clean the fireplace now. What am I going to find in the fireplace? I don't like this. I sighed and gathered the proper tools to clean it. Kneeling in front of the fireplace, I heard my phone go off. I picked it up shortly after, worried that it might have been Crowen needing something important. But it was just Reginald once again. Hello Mary! How are you feeling today? Me? I'm okay, I guess. Just destroyed some library property, so you know. Not in the best moods. Are you sure? Wait a second. No, I can't be sure. No, it's manga. I'm sorry. I, I just was struck by the idea that Reginald was the last one who read the book. But no, this isn't that book he was supposed to give to me. Fuck. I still feel terrible about what happened the other day. What, what do you mean? When you got stuck, remember? Oh well, perhaps it's better if you don't remember. <laughs> Well, anyways, I've still been feeling pretty awful about that. I was thinking of ways I can make it up to you somehow. And luckily, an opportunity has recently presented itself. Oh, you don't have to do anything. Really, it's alright. Please, I think you really like it. It really isn't necessary. But are you sure? Of course I'm sure. In fact, I'd say it was meant to be. Ah, Reginald, I hope you kill me this time. It's so perfect for you after all. You see, I was recently invited to a funeral. And who better to invite me than you? Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you feeling alright? Oh yes, yes, no need to worry. It wasn't anyone related to me. I just happened to make the coffin. I wish you could see the... the... The broad grin and blinking eyes I just did at the camera. Oh god. Oh, how long until I get a face scan? God, one knows. Oh, yes, yes, no need to worry. It was no one close, just someone I used to know a long, long time ago. I hadn't seen him in ages, which surprised me even that I was invited. But since I was, I thought you would like to come. You do like these events, right? Well, I guess I can't deny that I do. <laughs> but are you really sure it's okay for me to come? Of course! I think if anyone can put the, fu the fun in funeral, it's you. My reputation. It's amazing. Aw, <laughs> shucks. Reginald forward forwarded me the details of the funeral and told me where I'd be meeting him. Despite our area's pretty cemetery, this funeral is going to be entirely in a church. Heh. You don't have a real funeral in a church? Like, you can start it at a church, but it has to end the cemetery, right? I had never been to a funeral in a church before. Each one I've attended has been outside. And it's a lot easier to walk into one that's held outdoors. <laughs> now I was invited and I could not deny I did feel a little excited. Is that bad? I've never really gone to churches. But they always seem so pretty from the outside. Mary, if only you knew. I just never had a reason to go. 
but now I do. I kept the touch of Reginald until that day, always double checking the details, such as the time and location. I didn't want to be late or hold anything up or cause any disruption. Reginald kept assuring me that it would be alright though, and that he'd wait for me outside so I wouldn't get too lost either. On the day of the funeral, I wore my usual attire. It's one of the great things about dressing like this. <laughs> Dressed for a funeral every fucking day. I'm always funeral ready. <laughs> I mean, that's not the only reason I dress like this. I just like the color black a lot. It accentuates my pale skin. But I still think red is my favorite color. Probably. <laughs> when I turned down the street the church was on, I spotted the original standing on the front steps. He spotted me in return and gave a polite wave as he waited for me to reach him. Reginald, I want to smack you, but only because you look pretty. Why don't you look nice? No, oh, really. I'm just wearing what I always do. <laughs> yes, I know. But it's a nice look for you. Ah, oh, right, right. Here, take this. Reginald handed me a small package of tissues. I know you're not one to cry at these events, but just in case. Oh, thank you. That's very considerate of you. Do you think you'll need them too? Oh, no, no. I'm not much of a cry, I'm afraid. Besides, I think it's hard to be sad with you around. I'm sorry, I'm just struck with the the image of the person who smiles at funerals. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be that person or not, because I that is a complicated thought. Original opened the door for me and I stepped inside. I'd always admired this building from the outside, but had never really been inside before. The ceilings towered above us. The walls were clean and dark, and the tile floors below us gave a pleasant, a pleasant song with stuff on. He gestured to the direction we would be heading in for the service. There was a lot of people. That made me happy. We all herded into the room, everyone looking for a proper pew sitting with a nice enough view of the priest. I sat down in the closest open spot to me, and almost immediately, I felt an overwhelming sense of dread. I like the blurring effect, because she just can 100% feel like that. I'm not sure what caused it, or why it was happening, but it was as if the world was ending. Somehow. I don't know. I just couldn't place this overwhelming sense of doom I was feeling. I looked around. It seemed like no one else was experiencing it. But it was so prominent to me. Almost tangible. Like a heavy weight that was sinking into your shoulders. The loud music that reverberated through your bones. The ceilings were so high and I had plenty of room to sit, and yet I felt so terribly claustrophobic. God, if I don't know the ceiling? And I'm sure some of you relate to this, but others will have no idea. It's the feeling when you walk into a church for the first time. And it's not just an empty church, it's a full, full church of people. And the pastor's in the front, and the little light doing exactly this shining church's thing last windows. And it feels like you're in a holy place, and that there's a pressure, there's an overwhelming sense that you should not do anything whatsoever, and that your existence, your entire being there, is a problem, and that you shouldn't be there since you don't belong to the faith. <laughs> it's just the strangest thing. Because you can't explain it to anyone who hasn't been to church. So it's amazing. <laughs> it's one of those very, very distinguishable feelings. And I'm not saying I like the feeling, but I love the sense of this is a very unique feeling. 
I could not even hear what the priest was saying, or rather I could hear it, but I felt as if I could not listen properly, as if they were speaking under water. What was this feeling? It was making me feel sick. Mary, are you having a fucking anxiety attack? It's possible. I felt the temples in my head start to throb. The more time went on, and each muffled noise that caused its way across the room somehow gave me a sense of nausea, as if just the vibrations of sound were causing me to feel dizzy. Something wasn't right. That's all I could think to myself. I felt almost paralyzed in my seat as the bad feelings continued, so on and so forth. It was hard to describe exactly how it felt. Was this a stroke? A heart attack? I couldn't pinpoint this feeling. I just knew that something wasn't right. This could very well this this could very well be an anxiety attack on her part. And considering we've had a panic attack last time we were on Reginald. I'm interested in how this plays out. I wasn't even sure how to handle these feelings. It was as if I had entered some kind of dreamlike state. As if what I was feeling and everything around me was all some sort of elaborate dream. It was scary and claustrophobic. I felt like I had tunnel vision, and the world around me was becoming blurred. All the noises around me felt so muffled, yet also so loud. They made my ears ring, and all the while the only message my brain was feeding me was that something wasn't right. I, I didn't want to be disrespectful to the service or anything, but I had to leave. At least just leave the room. How long had this gone on anyways? It felt like it had been hours, but that couldn't have been the case. I think I was just feeling really sick, and that's why I... I eventually woke up the strength to exit the room. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm surprised she didn't just dash out. Things didn't seem quite so closed in when I did, but I still felt tidal waves of nausea rush over me every few moments. I couldn't understand what was causing this to happen. I felt terrified. In my dizzy state, I stumbled about until I found a bathroom. I went inside. The lights were bright and fluorescent in contrast to the rest of the church. The buzzing noise and stark whiteness of the room did not help my condition at all. As if overloading my senses even more. Luckily, I was already in front of a toilet, but my sickness got the better of me. I threw up. And something, something definitely was not right. Whatever I had peeked into the toilet was unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was pure black. And it glistened oddly in the light. Like ink or tar. Did this really come out of me just now? Or am I just seeing things? This feeling of nausea still hasn't left. I knock on the door. I wasn't given much time to inspect it further. But truthfully, I don't know if I wanted to. I had to just be seeing things, right? I told whoever was outside that I just needed a minute. I flushed the toilet and wiped the seat with toilet paper. All that murky, inky black water came up clear again after I had flushed it. I washed my hands and cleaned myself up in the sink before heading back out there again. As I exited the bathroom, I was greeted by a lady and gentleman standing right in front of me. Oh! Goodness, you startled me. Uh, I'm so sorry, and I apologize for the wait. Please go ahead. Well, that's quite all right. I just wanted to fix my makeup before we head out for dinner. Will you be joining us too? Huh? We saw you in the service day with us. Everyone was invited to come join us for dinner after. Sorry if we're appearing rude, but just who are you anyways? <clears throat> You're not some kind of crasher, right? Uh, usually I am, but not right now. Is it just me or is the world getting doggo? Mary? H huh? What do you mean? How are you related to the deceased? Who did you come here with? 
Well, not that so. Because I'm actually just. I'm Reginald's girlfriend! <laughs> I'm Reginald's girlfriend is the safest answer. This is a lie. That's a lie. This is also a lie. But it's the safest lie. I didn't want to cause any trouble leaving the service in the middle of it. I just wasn't feeling all that great, so I took off on my own. I, uh, I don't know where he is right now, but I'll, but I'll see him again soon, I'm sure. Oh, I see. He must be very wound up about all this stuff. Sorry to bother you. Oh no, don't be sorry. It's okay. I noticed him give me a weird look as he went those separate ways. That doesn't sit right with me. No, no, no. That... I was a cool worker. We uh, worked together quite a bit. Quite a lot. And we always spent lunch breaks together too. I know others might not consider it the closest kind of relationship, but... We... We were still really good friends, so it, it really feels... Oh, I see. Hold on a fucking second. Third cousin twice removed. We didn't see each other in person very often, but I loved to see them when the option was available. I uh, actually moved here very recently to spend more time together, but that's when. I'm gonna go with third option twice removed. Uh, to to uh, cousin whatever. I don't want to associate myself with Reginald, and I don't like. I don't like the way all these choices didn't seem to have a real distinguishing factor. I'm worried. I know this doesn't give me a weird look as he went our separate ways. As I go closer to the main hall, I can see more and more people spilling out at the end. It seems like the service is just about over. But... I couldn't just leave. There was something really weird going on here. And I knew... It was connected to that coffin. The closer I got to it, the more intense that... nauseating pressure felt. It felt like walls. Closing in on my brain. And with what happened in the bathroom earlier, I... I couldn't just... let it go. You see... If the black tar is real, and then the sickness is... As soon as we stepped into the church, we were sick. And haven't you noticed the cute thing here? That her hair spikes up on the sides, almost like horns? Somebody could say she just kills a fucking demon. Wouldn't that explain? At least a little bit. Her obsession with morbid things, macabre things. Her fondness of cemeteries. Her pale skin. Although that's uh, just theory. I snuck close to the coffin. We were alone together. And the pressure felt more intense than ever. Honestly, I felt like I could puke again from just standing here. It just felt so hard to focus on anything except the pressure of it all. Something was telling me what's inside. I don't know if it's a body. I could hardly think properly. But all my brain could tell me was that something else was in there. No one else is around, right? Maybe I could just see inside. If I could just see inside, all all I need is one quick glance, and then maybe my mind will be at ease. I reached my arm towards the coffin, and <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact. That I know there are people sleeping nearby. 
I was about to scream, Jesus fucking Christ, Reginald. Okay. That's the end of the episode. Thanks. Like and subscribe. Comment. Bye.